one and all and listen to tales of excitement and adventure. Tales of daring heroes, savage monsters, and bards who just couldn't keep it in their pants. Tales of friendship, nobility, drunken foolishness, and unforgettable fun. These are tales of role-playing games, fair listeners, and this is Rollin' Bones. My name is Ryan Howard, and I shall be your god. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Rollin' Bones. This is a uh, very special Saturday morning broadcast, uh, since Danishes and Dragons is not really a thing anymore. Uh Uh-oh, camera's frozen. That's a problem. That is a problem. Uh, Guys, just give me one second to fix this, and we will uh, kick this off. Good morning, Loopy. We'll have that camera feedback up in just a second. I would be talking during this, but uh, my microphone is in front of me and my computer's behind me because of the setup. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, Loopy, what's your what's your exciting news? What's going on? As I uh, prepare everything here, tell us, tell us, tell us, if you're comfortable sharing it here. But while we are waiting on Loopy's exciting news, I'll just go ahead and uh, let you guys know. What we're doing today, uh, as you can see from the title, we are unboxing the, uh... Oh, yes! Sweet! Loopy made affiliate! Awesome! I actually recently made affiliate myself. So, welcome to the club that I just got welcomed into. Oh, sweet! Now, are you, uh, is this a new job within the same organization that we know each other from, or is this a new opportunity entirely? While we are, uh, awaiting that answer, I will go ahead, oh, oh, nice, there we go, cool, well, Best of luck as you move forward, uh, you know. I am excited for you, and I hope you do well at this, uh, this new job, and, uh, we'll continue stopping by your stream, and, uh, hope you continue 
stopping by this one, and uh, we'll keep up with uh, how you're doing that way. Cool. So, uh, yeah, we are unboxing uh, the Deadlands Kickstarter rewards that I received this week. Let's see. Looks a little bit crooked. Eh. As long as I put things out there crooked, it'll be fine. Oh, that's ridiculous. I mean, I guess you have to go through that special program they have for that, but still, that's... That's not cool. I don't know why they did that. Anyway. Um... Just to let you guys know a little bit about uh, this Kickstarter campaign and uh, what all I have here. I'll be showing you guys these things like one, two at a time if they're small. Uh, but what we're starting with here, uh, just, just to let you guys know again what I've got here as far as the uh, campaign is concerned. I'm pulling up my pledge right now. Kickstarter wants me to give them my password. As always. Okay, so I pledged at the Marshall level, and then I added a couple of add-ons. Uh, so at the Marshall level, your pledge is... The Marshall level, your pledge includes the uh, the base box set, the Horror at Headstone Hill box set, and then uh, the Weird West companion guide that was unlocked through stretch goals. Everything else that I have here is uh, upgrades. Uh, so you guys will see a little bit of what came with that. And yes, we are talking about some Rootin' Tootin' Cowboys today, which is always fun. Uh, first and foremost, I want to show off one of the add-ons that you got if you were a high roller for this campaign. You got a shiny Marshall's badge. Definitely. I will definitely remind you later. Yeah, we've got this Deadlands Marshals badge here, which is, uh, I mean, it, it signifies your authority as the uh, the Marshal of uh, Deadlands. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, when you play Deadlands, the GM is called the Marshal, and as you can see here, one of your players very clearly did not agree with one of your rulings in the past, but you survived. Next up, we have the action deck, which was also an add-on. Uh, basically, this is an oversized deck of cards with jokers. Uh, but the reason why I got one of these is Deadlands uh, uses a card system for initiative. So these are going to be a little bit hard to see with the, uh, the light. But you can see, you know, there's some interesting art. And then... All of the figures on the face cards are historical figures, but also figures from Deadlands, like Raven, if any of you are Deadlands aficionados out there. Um, going through here, Billy the Kid, for just those of you who are Western aficionados, Ronan Lynch. And no, Elfie, I did not name our cat after Ronan Lynch. I did not realize that there was a Ronan Lynch in the world of Deadlands. Ronan was named independently. So, those are just a couple of the add-ons that I got. Uh, another couple of the add-ons that I received here, which I really like, are these map packs. So we've got the Grand Saloon. And we've got Boot Hill. If I can open these up a little bit uh, on the sleeve in here, you can see kind of the, the layout of the map. Just a general overview. And this is a two-sided map. Basically, I'm not going to unfold this whole thing because I don't have enough room on this table and you guys couldn't see all of this. But 
You know, you've got the inside of a saloon here. And then on the other side of the map, you have the layout of a town, which is pretty cool, in my opinion. And this is the Grand Saloon map pack. And then for the same town, you've got the Boot Hill map pack. So you can see here, this is the the one side and this is the other. Boot Hill is a gunfighter's graveyard for anyone unfamiliar with old western mythology. And Ronan's already most of the way to being a cowboy. He is a uh, he's a pony, so just a little look see here. See if we can get a shot of that graveyard which I think is on the other side. There's a blacksmith shop, which I am very happy about. Here we go. Boot Hill. Right next to the chapel. Alright. So, those are the extras that were unlocked. Let's mosey on over to the main box set. This is just the main uh, introductory starter box set for Deadlands, the Weird West. It comes with almost everything you need to play Deadlands. Uh, for anyone who is unfamiliar with Savage Worlds, there's one additional book that you need uh, to, to play any Savage Worlds setting. Let me go grab my copy of it real quick, and I will show it to you. Okay, so for this particular edition of Savage Worlds, you also need a copy of the Savage Worlds Adventurers Edition Core Rules. This is the most recent edition of Savage Worlds. So anyone looking to kind of enter that particular, uh, that particular side of gaming, check out what Savage Worlds is all about. This is going to be your starting point. Uh, this gives you just kind of the introductory rules, teaches you about the cards, the dice, character creation, all that stuff. Oops. And then Deadlands is a setting. It was not always just a setting, but as, uh, you know, as Pinnacle evolved what they offer, uh, you know, starting out, the card thing came from Deadlands because, obviously, you know, cards are important to, you know, cowboy mythology. And that just kind of, you know, carried over into what Savage Worlds became in general a uh, few years later. Because Deadlands came out in 1996, I believe, was the first edition of Deadlands. What I'm pulling out here is a map, and I'll show it to you. This is a map of the the world of Deadlands, because it is a somewhat familiar world. Specifically, as you might be able to see, this is a map of the United States. Uh, however, it's a map of the United States in the Deadlands world, which is 1881... 1884, as you can see here. 1884. Map of the Western States from the Smith and Robards, who are the uh, Sears and Roebuck of the Deadlands world. Uh, and so basically, what you can see from that map, although you couldn't see it very well, it's a, it's a big map. Like, this goes up on a wall or something. 
uh, which I'm very happy about, because it'll give my players, whoever I end up forcing uh, to play Deadlands, it'll give them a, a nice big overview of what part of the U.S. they are in, and, you know, what's the same and what's different about it. So a lot of these places in the U.S. at this time were territories, not states. And in addition, there's some magical stuff that happened that has caused a lot of uh, shifts and borders and stuff like that. Uh, the California Territory on the coast, there was a, uh, a big magical event that basically shattered the coast as far as the fault lines were concerned. So a lot of the coast of California ends up uh, just being a collection of islands. And within that is the free city of Lost Angels, which is one of the major places in uh, the California Territory. On top of that, you know, there's a, a couple other things. Oklahoma, only half of Oklahoma is Oklahoma. The other half is the Coyote Confederation. Uh, so a lot of the uh, a lot of the Indian Territory ended up staying that way. Uh, same with the Dakotas. Uh, Dakota is actually just one territory here. Uh, the What would have been most of North Dakota and uh, most of South Dakota, as well as some of Wyoming, is the Sioux Nation. And that also goes into Nebraska. So yeah, there's a lot of... There's a lot of shakeups, and of course, you know, Utah is its own nation, basically. And Loopy, if you were down to, to play a couple sessions of this uh, this game, then yeah, I'd, we can uh, we can get something set up there. And it's even beyond like even playing Deadlands. Again, I've talked about the setting a lot, probably ad nauseum. Coffee for effect. Um, even within Deadlands, it's not just cowboys. Like, if someone wants to play, you know, a, a rootin' tootin' cowboy, as, uh, as Loopy likes to say, uh, you can certainly do that. You can be a gunslinger. You can basically be Clint Eastwood, uh, or Wyatt Earp, or whoever it is you want to be from whatever Western movie you like. But there's also, you know, like, you can be a Native American warrior. You can be a shaman. Uh, you can play a priest. You can play a martial artist. There's all kinds of crazy stuff that you can do. There, there's even, uh, thanks to stretch goals and stuff, there are rules for uh, playing like a full-on witch. So there's a lot of interesting and weird stuff that you can do in this Weird West game. And there's also a lot of steampunk that happens. Uh, like, as you can see here on these archetype cards... You know, the I just combined a couple decks here. Forgive me. Set that aside. The agent here, you might not be able to see very well because this camera is not designed for detail. The agent here has a Gatling pistol, which is, if not a common item in Deadlands, uh, something that you can get a hold of relatively easy. It'd be the same as getting a hold of a plus one sword in, like, a regular D&D uh, &D game. Technically uncommon, but common enough that your players can lay their hands on them at some point. So that's some of the craziness that you get here. One of my favorite little details of this campaign uh, that I just love is the ammo counter. And you can use this for other things, you know, anything that basically involves tracking numbers. I believe these things go, yeah, they go all the way to 20. And then all the way down to zero. Uh, but, you know, you can use them to count your ammunition at the table. It's a, a little, you know, simple thing, but the design of it is a revolver cylinder. Yes, you could make Vash the Stampede. You could very easily make Vash. But, like, the the design aesthetic of this is what I love so much about it. It's, you know, it's simple, 
but it's a it's a spinning revolver cylinder and i i like that detail there's uh there's five of them here so you know for five players it's pretty good i can't imagine having much more than five players in a deadlands game i've run a deadlands game with 10 players but anyone who's been around sufficiently long enough on the channel has heard about the deadlands incident so uh yeah yeah we'll just uh we'll just let that uh let that one lie for now another thing that i'm pulling out here um these are bennies, which are very important for Savage Worlds as far as, uh, tracking your, your benefits and, uh, you know, you, you cash these in for bonuses on rolls, basically, but they are, like, full-on poker chips, and I do have other poker chips as well, but... It's it's cool that this came with just, you know, some some Deadlands branded bennies with a little bit of art on them. What I also think is funny about just the phrase bennies, uh There's one with stone on them. Stone's kind of the the big bad undead from Deadlands. That's a very difficult to see on this camera, but And this might just be my own ignorance of phrases that people use all the time, but whenever I read Savage Worlds and it explains the concept of bennies, it basically says it's American slang for benefits. I'm like, I don't know about that, because I'm American, I've been American my whole life, and the only person I've ever heard use that term is Shane Lacey Hensley. So I don't know if it's an Arizona thing. I don't know if it's a Shane Hensley thing. He's the only person I ever hear consistently use that, though. And you guys will notice there's a lot of packing material missing from this stuff. I went through and I took the cellophane off of stuff because I didn't think you guys wanted to hear all of that. I, I guess maybe that's not a true unboxing experience if you don't hear ripping cellophane, but me crinkling that bag to get these dice out uh, will certainly serve as a, uh, a substitute. So we've got some nice new dice here. I'm probably going to transport these to my dice bag, but I may just keep them in the box. Um, got a, a longhorn skull here for the six. Uh, which is only on this wild dice. It's not on the regular dice. These are just regular dice that you could use for anything. Only 1d10, but, you know, percentile dice aren't really a thing in Savage Worlds. So, you don't need the second set. But it is cool that the wild die gets differentiated because the wild die is a separate thing entirely. Basically, it's it's a bonus to uh, help you meet the roll that you're looking to meet. You roll it even when you're not rolling a d6. Like, if you've got a d4 and something, you still roll the wild die. And if you roll a 6, the dice explodes. You get to roll it again. Which is always a good time if you're on a hot streak. So if the dice are with you, the dice are with you. So, I showed these already, but these are archetype cards. And basically, what these do is if you have a group of people who don't necessarily want to create their own characters, or, you know, you're, you're just now teaching people how to play Deadlands, uh, rather than having them make their own character, you can basically just give this to them as their character sheet. Uh, this is also good for, like, a one-shot. So if I were to run a one-shot with Deadlands, uh, rather than make characters, I'd just give out the, uh, just give out the cards here. Um, as far as ranks, because that's, instead of a level in Savage Worlds, uh, you get ranks. 
Looks like everyone is rank seasoned, which is good. That's kind of the mid-level of Savage Worlds. It doesn't roughly... Uh, it doesn't necessarily equivocate to anything specific as far as like D&D levels go. But it does kind of give you an idea of how experienced in the world your character would be. So if we look through here, it's at the very end of character creation. Yeah, so seasoned, you're at four to seven advances, which are, you know, upping hindrances and or upping edges removing hindrances, that kind of stuff. Edges and hindrances are a big uh, part of Savage Worlds that help you roleplay. Here's the rank chart. It's very hard to see, but... You know, at this point, you're... Um, actually, the mid-level would be veteran, but the, this is, like, basically a fifth-level character is the best way to think about it for those of you who are D&D uh, &D inclined. And here you've got some, uh, these are Manitou cards. And these explain kind of the, the different demons that you can encounter uh, based on the Harrowed. And basically the Harrowed... The Harrowed is an interesting concept within Savage Worlds broadly, and specifically in Deadlands. Basically, in Deadlands, if you die, uh, your character might not actually go anywhere. There's a role that you have to make, but there is at least the probability that your character will come back from the dead. And you become essentially a zombie. Uh, you look pretty much the same, but you have these demons that kind of uh, work within you. Demons are a very big part of Deadlands. Uh, not only do they factor in as far as the Harrowed are concerned, but they also factor in if you're playing the Huckster... Let me show you that card here, so you have an idea of what you're getting into. The Huckster. Basically, you are a magical gambler. You are like a combination of a wizard, Doc Holliday, and Gambit from X-Men. Because most of what you're doing as far as attacks is throwing cards. And the whole concept of where your power comes from is rather than a deal with the devil, I mean, there's kind of a deal with the devil, but you're basically playing games against a demon. You're essentially playing poker against a demon and or, or dice or whatever your game is. And your dice rolls to, to fire off your powers represent you winning over that demon and being able to... Uh, use whatever power you want. This is something that should not be role-played every single time a hexter, a uh, hexter, a huckster makes a roll. But for anyone who's new to Deadlands, establishing that's what you're doing, like the first time they roll an attack, uh, that's that could give the player a very cool image of what's going on in their mind. And I always like to give players kind of a vivid image of, you know, what, what they have in store. Um, one of my favorite things ever that I've stolen whole cloth from one of my DMs is whenever a player goes down, whenever they die, essentially, or they run out of hit points and they're making death saves in D&D, &D, 
I have death personified uh, show up and uh, kind of torment them as figures from their past. I stole that wholeheartedly from uh, Muhammad, my first DM. I have told him that I've stolen this, and it's made its way into pretty much every single one of my campaigns. And I just love doing stuff like that, giving players an image of supernatural things that are happening uh, that is vivid enough that they can see something, but also vague enough that they can put whatever they want on that image. And the image of playing a game against a demon, kind of like in... uh, I can't remember the serious movie that this was a parody of, but like in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, when they're playing Battleship Against Death, that's that's kind of what this conjures up. And, and that is actually based on a serious uh, Scandinavian movie. I believe it was a Swedish movie. And I think it might just be called like The Game of Death or The Game or something like that, but basically a guy plays chess against death. And that's where the Bill and Ted thing came from. And then... Uh, They did a parody of it on Animaniacs as well. But yeah, that's that's an image that I like to give players uh, who are playing Hucksters. Moving on from that, though. Power cards. These are cards. They're, They're like spell cards, but they... You know, carry... They basically show some of the powers that your players can uh, can use or that you can use. I'm just arranging these based on rank. There we go. These are not comprehensive. Uh, there's a lot more powers that you can choose from in the Savage Worlds core book and even in this book right here, which we'll get to in just a second. But they do allow for, uh, you know, players to get an understanding of kind of the the most common uh, powers that they'll be throwing out there. There is no blast here, though. That's the only... Blast is pretty straightforward, though. Ammo whammy. This is a big one if you are uh, a hex slinger, which is a magical gunfighter. This power can only be used by a huckster with the hex slinging edge. And arcane runes in the barrel of a hex gun trigger various powers on the bullet inside. While the power is active, the Hex Slinger can choose one of the effects below to apply to each shot fired from his weapon. And you've got some things here. But yeah, if you, uh, Loopy, to speak specifically to the kind of character you wanted to make, uh, Vash the Stampede would likely end up being a Hex Slinger which is, uh, like that card said, a type of huckster. I can show that to you. And this might actually be more what Doc Holliday is, but you have the arcane background of a huckster. Uh, But you also have a hex gun, which... Vash's revolver would basically be his hex gun. And it's a magic gun that allows you to do magic things with it. Mostly shoot better. But yeah, if you wanted to kind of one-for-one make Vash the Stampede, or make a uh, an equivalent of Vash the Stampede, you'd be looking at probably making a hex slinger since a lot of his stuff is uh, beyond the realms of what's natural. He could just be a gunslinger, but... Yeah, magic guns. Magic guns are great as far as uh, Deadlands goes. So here you've got some adventure cards. 
Um, and you can just kind of pass these out. There are, there are rules for how to do this, but like this one, Hell's a Coming With Me. That's a reference to Tombstone. Uh, you play this when your character dies if you have it, and instead of drawing cards to see if you are harrowed, uh, you just pass the marshal this card and say, all right, I'm harrowed. This lets your posse re-roll a critical failure. It's not called a party in Deadlands. It's called a posse. But yeah, these cards... Um, they basically just kind of give you bonuses. So you get two extra whole cards and a duel. Um, yeah, these, these are just bonuses that you can receive throughout the, uh, throughout the play of the game. And then over here, we're looking at some gear cards. And these are just some crazy magical stuff that you can get. A mechanical mule. Electrostatic belt. Which basically lets you... Your enemies suffer, suffer a minus one shooting penalty. Because this electromagnetic field is like bouncing bullets off of you. It's great. Or bouncing bullets away from you. It does cost $1,500 though. And you have an epitaph camera, which basically lets you capture GIFs instead of uh, still pictures. It's the Harry Potter camera. And yes. Yes, you can put in the Adventure Time theme song. If you want. Still have never watched that show. Rocket pack. You can, in fact, get a jet pack in Deadlands. Infernal flamethrower. You can absolutely get a flamethrower. Steam Gatling, that's pretty self-explanatory. And those are just a few of the crazy items that you can get. There's all kinds of nonsense that you can acquire in Deadlands. Now we get to the main book. Deadlands core book. You have a smaller version of the map in here. I've already gone through uh, this book just in a, in a review, so we're not going to go through this whole thing uh, right now because I've already gone through it a little bit. Uh, we will be doing a full review on the horror at Headstone Hill at some point, um, and I'll open that box here in just a little bit. But yeah, this is just kind of your, your overview of the setting as a whole. I have not really gone through this book yet because I wanted to save that for you can see some of the bigger art pieces here there's a bigger piece on stone the undead guy there's a lot of cool stuff in this book there's the cover image again but yeah this basically explains you know life in the weird west you can take a look at some of the uh, some of the enemies here Anything with a star next to it is an ace, uh, which is basically a boss villain. So keep that. Or a wild card, not an ace. And wild cards are played similar to uh, player characters, but not entirely. Yeah, you could you could create a steam powered automaton character. I'd I'd allow that. If you want to be a steam-powered cowboy robot, that that's perfectly within the bounds of Deadlands. Down here, you've got some ironclads firing on each other in what I'm pretty sure is the maze, which is down... That's the, that's the California coast, is the maze. So some cool stuff there. There's your steam-powered automaton, Loopy. Your mileage may vary on uh, exactly what you look like, but yes, you could you could definitely create a, a steam-powered robot. Although, uh, to speak specifically to the setting, you would not be steam-powered because everything in uh, 
or you'd not be directly steam powered. Everything in Deadlands that's magical and mystical is powered off of ghost rock, which is like a spooky coal that lets them make all kinds of crazy stuff. So you would be a ghost rock robot, but still, you could do it. This is an adventure that comes with the box set Showdown at Sundown. Basically, if you and your group want a quick primer on Deadlands, see kind of all there is to see, this is probably the best place to start. You can probably pretty easily run this straight into horror at Headstone Hill, I imagine. Haven't tried it yet. Uh, haven't gone through the adventures in detail. But at some point, I will do a full review of Showdown at Sundown, as well as uh, horror at Headstone Hill. Might do them at the same time, not really sure. And then the last thing that you get in this box is the Deadlands GM screen. The GM screen's a little bit shorter, as far as height-wise, as you can see here, than your typical GM screen would be. But if you look here, um, a lot of what you have here are combat rules, which can be a little bit granular in... Uh, Savage World, so that's a good resource to have. Injury table. Uh, just to, uh, just to highlight this injury table here, it's a little bit hard to read, uh, but when you get a wound, you roll 2d6 to determine the location of the wound, and if you roll snake eyes, you get shot in the junk. If you roll a 12, though, if you roll uh, boxcars, you end up uh, shot in the head. Which can result in having a hideous scar, which gives you the ugly major hindrance. Uh, you could be blinded or lose an eye. Or you can have brain damage, which reduces your die type uh, for smarts by one die. Reaction tables for NPCs. Uh, dealing with the devil, which is a, a draw, like drawing cards type thing. And then the infernal device malfunction table. So if you use one of those crazy devices that I showed off, uh, there's a chance that it could malfunction, and if... Oh, sorry. If it does malfunction, uh, there's a chance that things could go horribly wrong for you. Maybe not die. I'll, actually, you probably could die from it, depending on if there's an explosion. But... Always be careful when you're using crazy mystical devices. But Loopy, I'm glad that you're uh, you're fired up about this because this is one of my favorite games, one of my favorite settings, and it's so hard to convince people to play a Western game. It really is. Because as I've said before, when you say let's play a Western game, people immediately think rootin' tootin' cowboys. And they're all fired up for about half of a character creation session. Then when you actually play, they're like, eh, I'm already over it. But Deadlands is so much more to offer than that. It's just a matter of me being able to convince people with my game and with what's going on uh, that, you know, it's worth sticking it out for. So... This is a collection of stretch goals, basically. Um, what comes in here, and this is available uh, to other people, you have some additional edges for Harrowed, you've got some other powers, um, dealing with the devil for metal mages, metal mages themselves as, you know, an available archetype. Um, you've got this chapter here, which basically goes into the detail about the world around you and what all happened. Uh, basically a good primer on Deadlands 
to get you up to 1884 speed because a lot of stuff has happened. Deadlands and Deadlands Reloaded are very... Um, they were very meta-plot driven. And part of what made this... Uh, part of what made this new version of Deadlands unique is uh, Shane kind of set out to not completely take away the meta plot, it's still there, but to make it less prevalent. And to make uh, the Weird West a little bit more open, a little less uh, subject to what he set out in his meta plot. But what you see here, this explains kind of, you know, running Deadlands. This talks very in great detail about what a spaghetti western is, which I talked about on my How Ryan Would Run Westerns episode. And Loopy, I am very glad that you are making cowboy characters for D&D. &D. That sounds pretty cool. This is one of my favorite pieces of kind of Deadlands lore to go through here for just a little bit. These are relics. So basically, these are, uh, like, items of significance in the Weird West, and a lot of them uh, were owned by people who actually lived and, and real historical Western figures that, you know, you can bring into your games in, in crazy ways. And there's also just some cool... Uh, Cool magic items here. So, like, you have Billy the Kid's hat, which uh, makes you overconfident, but also makes you more lucky. You've got Bowie's last knife, which is always cool, and that's Jim Bowie, not David Bowie. Elfie. Gunslinger Bard. That sounds fantastic. Buffalo Calf, Buffalo Calf Road Woman's Pipe. Cortez's Sword. Cortez's Sword is one of the most interesting items in the game. Because it's a magical sword, and it inflicts uh, strength plus 2d6 damage, which is a lot of damage in Savage Worlds. But every time you draw blood with the sword, you start bleeding from... Or you have the image of bleeding from your hand, uh, your sword hand. It doesn't hurt you or anything, but you can't cover it. So the more the more you use Cortez's sword, uh, the more blood is just continuously running down your hands to the point where it can literally cover your entire arm. It goes through clothing. It can't be stopped by bandages. So if you end up using Cortez's sword, like as a main weapon, your arm is just going to be constantly oozing blood. And again, it doesn't do anything uh, as far as like hurting your character, except for in social situations, uh, you know, you, you just constantly have blood running down your arm. And people are going to be like, why are you bleeding? And yes, I suppose if you make your character David Bowie and then you encounter Jim Bowie's last knife, it can in fact be a David Bowie knife. Although I think just based on Labyrinth, a David Bowie knife would be another name for, like, I don't know, a dildo? That's a little bit more adult than we usually get on the show. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, like if you if you were playing that robot character and that started to happen, would you be bleeding or would you be like leaking oil? Probably bleeding because it's magic, but it would be funny if like your your robot character started using it and just oil was shooting out of you constantly.
the Holy Grail. You can get the Holy Grail in this uh, in this game. I don't know why the Holy Grail is in the Old West, but it's there if you want it. Earp's Badge. There's a lot of stuff in there. There's some extra archetypes and, and other cool things. I could look at that thing all day and just kind of go through it. Blood might actually be funnier. It's like uh, the game Republic Commando. It was a Star Wars game. Uh, right around kind of the... I think it came out right around the time of Episode 3. Maybe between Episode 2 and 3. But I bring it up because in that game you could get a knife and you were fighting droids. So if you like use the, the vibro knife, I think is what it was called. Vibro knives are a Star Wars thing, so I'm pretty sure that's what you were using. But if you use the vibro blade on a droid, they would bleed. Because, you know, edgy video games have to have blood. But they'd bleed... And it would be blue. And it was basically like droid oil, but... I mean, if you wanted to use it that way, Loopy, I'd just say uh, use caution. But yes, essentially. I don't like the idea of anything with a blade reaching anywhere near uh, what Deadlands calls the unmentionables, but, you know, still. So this is Horror at Headstone Hill. This is the first adventure. And as you can see down here, uh, I'm dead because that gravestone says Howard. And this is one of the cool things about this adventure that I really liked as I was first kind of going through it. These, uh, these table handouts are just fantastic. Like the, You guys obviously can't see how it feels, but this is like a... This is a letter from the Tombstone Epitaph, which is a newspaper um, in Tombstone, Arizona. And it's, uh, like, it feels like old paper. It looks like old paper. This thing's amazing. Old photograph. Also looks pretty cool. I wish it would have been a 10 type, or at least, like, a fake 10 type, but that would probably be super expensive to print something on a piece of metal, so. And then you've got some newspaper clippings from the Tombstone Epitaph which are always, you know, cool. Western Union Telegram. Which I guess you can fill this out. But again, I'm don't want people filling out my uh my GM handout so I can use them over and over again. This is my favorite thing. This uh, this 500 share certificate. Because it feels like an actual like stock certificate. That and I'm very happy that this game comes with stonks. So I am not going to sell this. I am going to hold it. I'm going to hold forever. And then uh, these are notes, basically. I'd cut these out. Yes. Even in the Weird West. Stonks. Now I just want to take that Stonks meme and put a cowboy hat on the guy and say, like, stonks, dagnabbit. <laughs> yep. Mm. 
And then you've got these right here, which are figure flats. I'm going to try to turn these over. They have a front and a back. Some of these, these things pop out very, like, without much prompting. So I'm being careful with them so I don't have to rearrange them on, on camera. Uh, this is something that Shane kind of admitted that he borrowed heavily from Paizo, the, uh, the Pathfinder people. And it's basically, you know, if you don't have minis or, you know, you're obviously not going to have minis for everything, uh, cause there's a lot of very unique Deadland specific stuff here, but still, you've got figure flats that, uh, you can use as miniatures and use along with your miniatures. You guys have already seen my Western miniatures, which I'm very, very happy with. I was just about to say I might need a, a broader variety of Western miniatures, but I know that Elfie is going to say, no, you don't. So, And here's a map of the game area that you're playing in. It is uh, the Unita territory. So it's kind of the edge of Wyoming and Utah, which is called Deseret and Deadlands. And it's, you know, it's the Mormon territory. You have a uh, wild die that has a headstone instead of a six. Also very cool. You've got a couple cards for some of the other kinds of characters that you can play. So if you want to be a mountain man, you know, there's, there's an archetype card for you. Harrowed Huckster. Alchemist. Prospector. You can bring whoever you want to it, though, as far as characters. And then you've got some of these uh, NPCs that show up in the game. Got cards for them that just kind of give you their, their stats. I'm very excited to see what this thing does, because uh, it looks freaky. It's very Lovecraftian. Night Hoss, which is like an eight-legged horse. Burn which thing in fire? The eight-legged horse or the uh, the tentacle uh, skull trapper thing? Because I mean, the eight-legged horse is just a horse with eight legs. But I I definitely see what you're talking about if you're talking about the. Uh, the Skull Trapper. So these are Twilight events. Uh, these are crazy things that can happen uh, just kind of during the uh, the course of the game. I've not read through Headstone Hill, so I don't know the specifics. I will, as I've already said a couple times, have a full review of Headstone Hill at some point in the coming weeks. Uh, just whenever I have... Uh, yeah. Whenever I have... Uh, an opening, I will plan for a Headstone Hill uh, review. So, this is a player's introduction. You know, you give this to your players. Tells them a little bit about, you know, all the things going on. And then this little Judy right here, as Levi Combs would say is the Horrid Headstone Hill itself. Some more cool art there. Nice uh, Union Cavalry soldier. Introduction on the setting. Nice map of Headstone Hill. And just kind of a general look at the world of... Headstone Hill, and what kind of things you'll be running into. So, that is Deadlands, the, the Kickstarter campaign, in a nutshell. There are some other things that other uh, 
backers got. They did a whole figure flats line for, uh, like, just regular characters and monsters as well. Uh, that was part of the campaign. You could get a whole set of figure flats. And yeah, Loopy, this the art in this game is consistently great. Um, even some of the old stuff from, like, the, the first edition of Deadlands, awesome. I'm, I'm consistently impressed with kind of the quality of Pinnacle's art. It's always, you know, very good, very cool, very evocative, and uh, this is no exception. So yeah, that is the Deadlands campaign in a nutshell. All in all, uh, just, just as an overview of how the campaign went, I think it was, you know, very successful. There were some delays. I know that uh, there was a big delay for anyone who got the High Roller Pledge or who ordered uh, the metal dice that they offered because there was a customs holdup with the metal dice. Those kinds of things are, you know, circumstances beyond control, though. And Pinnacle, every step of the way, was very uh, upfront with people about delays. Uh, so, you know, all in all, they did a great job. They delivered a great product. These games are beautiful. Uh, they're awesome. And the support for Deadlands, because the game's just coming out now, is only getting stronger. They've already got a campaign up for Blood Drive, which is the next, uh... Excuse me, the, ne the next adventure after Horrid Headstone Hill. Uh, I think that campaign's still live. It might have already ended, though, but either way, that'll be coming out soon. Uh, personally, I'm probably just gonna stick with the Deadlands Core box and Horror at Headstone Hill and any other adventures I will kind of make up myself because I love westerns. I already have cool ideas for stuff. Oh, I'm just playing with my badge. I just have it in my hands because I love this thing so much. This, like... As silly as it is to say, this is probably my favorite thing about the campaign. Because as a kid, I loved, 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 loved those like metal sheriff's badges that you could get in like tourist places. Uh, I had I, I had two. One was a sheriff's badge. One was a marshal's badge. Uh, you know, we went to Tweetsie Railroad in. The mountains of North Carolina, not too terribly far from Asheville. For anyone uh, familiar with that, it's basically like an old west town that they set up in Asheville, of all places. But all that stuff is really fun. Uh, just as someone who loves western stuff, is obsessed with the genre... Wild West Con. I need to check that out. Is this like a convention focused on the Wild West, or is this some kind of other thing uh, that you're you're trying to trick me into? Basically, what I'm asking is this a uh, is this like a Club Pen Fifteen situation? Because <laughs> if there is a Wild West Con where it's just like Western stuff. That sounds like fun. But yeah, this badge is just... Th this really kind of sums up everything great about this campaign. Just the, the cool little attentions to detail that uh, they have uh, at Pinnacle. And... The fact that it has a bullet hole in it, it's just, you know, it's its magical. And I guarantee you I will be wearing this every single time I run the game, and this will be a sign of my authority as the marshal. My marshal's badge. Ooh. 
there is in fact a Wild West con. Loopy just sent me the link offline. Let's see what we're looking at here. Wild West, Wild Wild West Steampunk Convention. It's an online convention this year. Looks like it's already going on, so it'll be a next... Yeah, it's going on right now, <laughs> as we speak. Uh, the, the online convention is going on right now. Um, and it looks like they're doing it next year, March 3rd through the 6th, 2022... Looks like it's somewhere in Arizona. So yeah. That'll be interesting. Yep. Yeah, Old Tucson. Cool. America's only Western-style steampunk theme park. My only regret is that if it's in Tucson, even if it's in March, it's going to be too hot for me to wear my duster. But I can get over that. That is awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Loopy. Yeah, I am I am super into that. But anyway, guys, that is my review uh or my unboxing rather of Deadlands, uh the the Kickstarter campaign. Really glad that I was able to show this stuff off. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I hope you guys are, you know, into this. It sounds like, at the very least, I convinced Loopy to try this game, which will be fun. And yes, I know how much you love steam-powered giraffe, so it's, it's cool that they're there. I wonder if Professor Elemental goes. That would be interesting. I know he's not Wild West, he's more um, steampunk rap, and he's British. Oh, he does? Sweet. I love Professor Elemental. It's great. He is fantastic. He has a song called Fighting Trousers. How can you not love that man? But yeah, this is the new Deadlands... Uh, it's awesome so far from what I've seen. If you want a little bit more in-depth on the Deadlands uh, game itself, the core book, I did a review of that earlier. Uh, go check that out on audio or you know, on YouTube. It's up there. And I will be doing an in-depth review of the adventure that comes with uh, the Deadlands campaign or the Deadlands uh, core box as well as the horror at Headstone Hill at some point. Uh, just to let you guys know, next week uh, we will have a big return here on uh, Rolling Bones. We'll be talking with Banana Chan, who's had some really cool stuff happen uh, just since the last conversation we had with her and uh, Sen about Jungchu. Uh, so we'll be talking all about, you know, Betrayal at Mystery Mansion, a little bit about Dune, as much as we are legally allowed to talk about uh, the the fact that she uh, is working on the new uh, Ravenloft setting. Uh, she has announced that, so I'm not spilling the beans or anything like that. She's doing work on Ravenloft. So we'll talk a little bit about horror RPGs and, and some of what uh, you know, she brings to the table as far as that goes. So that'll be very interesting uh, to have her back on because uh, she's done a lot of great work. She's very prolific when it comes to games. And it's cool to, you know, talk to someone like Banana who is so excited about RPGs. And also at some point, speaking of Kickstarter, we will be doing a review of... Uh, Escape from Skullcano Island. I have that now. I can read over it. And we can talk about, you know, Levi Combs' latest madness. Uh, everything he puts out is just fantastic in a very bizarre way. So we'll be doing that in the coming weeks, probably the week after next. 
But until then, guys, whether you rolled a 1 or a 20, I'm so glad that you rolled your bones with me, Ryan Howard, and I'll see you next time.